Hi, it's Money with Dan here, and in this video, I'm going to share how I, as a professional accountant, set my own personal financial goals using the same methods used by big successful companies each year. Setting clear and specific personal financial goals is the key to creating a successful budget plan that you will stick to for the whole year. Individuals and big companies face the same challenges to meeting financial goals. After all, we're all human, and we face the same temptations every day to spend money that we probably should be saving. What makes a great personal financial goal? A great goal needs to be smart. No, not that type of smart. I mean S-M-A-R-T, where S stands for specific, M stands for motivational, A stands for attainable, R means relevant, T stands for trackable and time bound. A common goal that I see beginners have is save $10,000. This is a very specific goal which covers the S part of being smart. Being specific about a financial goal is a good start, but eventually you will think, Dan, how am I ever going to find a spare 10K on this salary? Haven't you heard about inflation? Interest rates are going through the roof? Or jobs are being cut in this weak economy? This is precisely why your personal financial goals need to meet the SMART criteria. Chasing a goal that is not SMART is a waste of time and is actually demotivating and can actually cause more harm than good. Instead of setting a dollar value, you could rewrite this goal as save 10% of each paycheck for the next 12 months. 10% is another nice round target that can sound a little less overwhelming for some people. This revised goal is even more specific than 10k and gives you some flexibility in case you run into a tough month if you have some variable income, say from shift work where your hours are more or less, or perhaps you change a job. When your income changes, reframing the specific amount needed to save while still being in line with your original goals helps give more clarity on what you need to do when circumstances change unexpectedly to keep you on track to achieving your goal. Inflexible goals that are too rigid to cope with change will typically lead to a person giving up on that goal. Personal financial goals are meant to be a marathon and not a race, and you need the right vision to carry you through all the resistance you will likely face. However, simply being specific about how much you want to save is not a SMART goal. Why? Let's go through the SMART criteria further, and I'll show you how this goal can be improved even more. Motivation. Let's start with that. Saving 10% is a common financial goal. Some people having an extra 10% per month in savings would be very handy for an emergency fund a holiday, or even getting started on a deposit to buy a home. However, for some, saving 10% in cash may not seem worthwhile as we all have many competing demands and cravings where we are often tempted to use that money set aside to pay for things that are fun. The target needs to be motivational for you to make the necessary adjustments to your lifestyle to keep this money aside in your savings account in the long term. If you can't visualize how you're going to spend the savings amount on something that is very important to you, then you will eventually lose the motivation to keep working towards achieving this goal and you will forget about it. Most people forget about their goal a month after setting them as the motivation just isn't strong enough to endure the hardship you will face over time. If you think this might be you, then you need to be clearer on why this goal is important to you and think about it almost every day to remind you of your purpose and your intention. Try reframing the goal to be more meaningful to you. In my example of a personal financial goal, we can modify it to be save 10% of my total income each paycheck by the end of the year in order to pay for my holiday to Bali without using my credit card. The motivation with this goal is clearly to enjoy a holiday without worrying about consumer debt and the burden of interest. The vision you will have with this personal financial goal should be sunbaking on the beaches of Bali knowing you don't need to worry about the bill as you have the cash available to pay for everything. Whenever you feel the temptation to spend the amount of money that you're saving, you need to be able to envision the benefit you will receive from having the money saved. You will quickly forget about the short-term temptation as you have a greater purpose for that money in the medium to long term. Now let's take a look at whether the goal is attainable. Is saving 10% of total income paid attainable to you and what would it require? What do you need to do in order to save this amount? Can you give up spending on a gym membership that you don't use each month? Or do you need to live somewhere cheaper? Can you get a higher paying job in a different industry? Or can you get an education or perform some training that will eventually lead to something better? What is it that you need to do to make this goal attainable? And how willing are you to make these lifestyle changes and investments? What is stopping you right now from making these changes today? Many of these constraints are assumed and not always real. We think of these constraints and then we give up before we even try. 
Think about a change that you would like to make and think about what is stopping you. Can you find a cheaper alternative? Can you go for a walk and do push-ups at home instead of that gym membership? Can you walk to the train station instead of driving or ride a bike to work? Can you live closer to work or change jobs to somewhere closer to home? If your goal is not attainable at the beginning, then you need to revise the goal to something you truly believe you can attain. Perhaps the 10% amount is too high. Or maybe the time frame you have given yourself to save is too short. Are you looking at lower cost options to aim for and lower the 10% target? Or can you delay your goal a little longer if you can't compromise on the value? For example, do I really have to vacation in Bali? Or can I go somewhere else that is just as beautiful and relaxing but is cheaper at the time I want to travel? Stretching yourself is good with an ambitious goal. But stretching too far beyond your means will quickly make you lose motivation and your goal will not be smart. If your goal is obtainable, then it is smart. If your goal is obtainable, then it will be smart and there will be less internal and external resistance to achieving it and you'll be more likely to succeed. But is your goal relevant? Will saving 10% from each pay make a difference to your situation? Is 10% more than you need to go on that dream holiday? And is this target too high and stopping you from going sooner? Maybe 10% is not high enough for a home deposit and you need to raise the bar higher by cutting your expenses deeper, delaying the purchase time, or looking for another job. Is your life partner on board with your goal and is it relevant to them too? Are they okay with the changes you need to make to reach your goal? If your actions to achieve a personal financial goal affects more than one person and they are not in agreement with your proposed actions, then this can lead to conflict and a barrier to save that money. You can reduce conflict with your personal financial goals by clarifying what you want to achieve and why, negotiating with your partner on what is acceptable, and also clarifying how they too can benefit from this goal and getting them on board and making a valuable contribution to your goal. You need to make sure you are aligned with each person affected by your goal and ensure they understand your purpose. Then try and work together to achieve the goal Remind each other of the goal's importance and hold each other accountable if someone is not holding onto their end of the bargain. Otherwise, you might need to revise the specifics of your goal until it is smart. And finally, for your financial goal to be smart, it needs to be time-bound and trackable. A smart goal should add a time frame that is realistic to you and that you are realistically able to achieve it. For instance, if I add in 12 months to this goal, it starts to be clearer of what I'm trying to achieve. It is a terrible feeling to fall short of your target by the end of the time that you have set. I would hate to get to the end of the year and realize I can't go on my Bali holiday after dreaming about it and sacrificing for a year just because I didn't make the right choices. Being more specific with your time frame will help. You can make your time frame clearer by putting a specific date there. For example, I could change my goal to be Save 10% of my total income from my holiday to Bali to avoid using my credit card by the 15th of December 2020, whatever the date that suits. Adding a specific date gives you a deadline and you can put it in your calendar and give you a point of reference to keep checking on after each pay. Also, it is very common to forget the start date of setting a financial goal and you could be forever moving the end date as it is not clear when the 12 month mark is reached. You need to have a clear goalpost to aim for and finish at. But there are many ways to save 10% in a year, and for some it could simply mean taking a fixed dollar amount of 10k and dividing it evenly by 12, as in the number of months in a year. This means you could write your goal as save $833 per month for my holiday in Bali to avoid paying it by a credit card by the 15th of December 2020. And you could schedule an automatic bank transfer on the day you get paid. This can work well for people with fixed salaries and expenses that either do not change much from month to month or for those who have an ability to save 10k relatively easy. However, saving a fixed dollar amount each month may not be right for you and if you have a variable income or lots of expenses that are spread unevenly throughout the year, you might struggle. For instance, in some months you may be able to save only $200 due to some high quarterly electricity and utility bills while other months you could save $1,500 as you have either worked more hours than normal, received a bonus, or you had fewer expenses, or a combination of both. In this situation, having a fixed dollar amount to save automatically will present some challenges in the months that are lean, while you may not save enough in the good months to compensate for these tougher months. Some people lose sight of their goals in these tough months if they can't save that specific amount, 
which means the goal was probably not smart. This is why it is important to regularly track your expenses and income to work out how much you can and can't save each month and have a strategy to intervene when you start veering off course. Some strategies that are used to manage this is with an expense tracker and also having an emergency fund set aside to pay for big bills and unexpected emergencies instead of using money set aside for other goals like my Bali holiday for example. If you are continually pulling money out of your holiday fund to pay for emergencies, then you'll quickly miss out on the goal and it won't be smart. Being able to track your goal is smart and gives you more motivation to keep going and also gives you the time to re-optimize your strategy throughout the year if you start going off track. In order to track your expenses monthly, you will need to have a reliable tool that gives you the visibility of your spending habits that is quick and easy to update and review. I track my expenses using an Excel spreadsheet that automatically adds categories and an easy to read table like this. It is free to create with no subscription fees ever and I keep my copy offline so my data can be kept private and safe from being hacked. If you're interested in creating your own expense tracker in Excel, then I've created a 20 minute step-by-step -step video on, on how to make your own one for free. If spreadsheets are not your thing, then I understand. So I've also created a video with an alternative way to budget without spreadsheets using the bucket system in this video here. Good luck with setting your smart personal financial goals this year, and I'll see you in the next video.